In this exercise, we have a class that has a constructor that takes in a string, and it saves a copy of that string in a member variable s. The constructor also prints out ctor followed by the string that that is saved. Now assume that this class also has a copy constructor that prints out copy ctor and then the string that is saved, an assignment operator that prints out assign and then the previously saved string as well as the new string that it's receiving as as part of the copy, and then finally a destructor that prints out detour and then the string uh, that's currently saved. So take a look at the code on the right hand side and figure out when each of these functions gets called and in what order. So determine what gets printed out by that code. I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to work on it and then we'll look at it together. Okay, so let's start off with main. The first thing that happens in main is that we construct a my class object with the string apple, so that will print out ctor apple. And then we follow that with another my class object, now with string banana, so we get ctor banana. And then finally we construct another my class object with crazen, so we get ctor crazen. Now we have a call to func. And the first thing that we should look at is the parameters for func. Are they passed by reference or passed by value? Now, the first one is passed by reference, which means that we're not going to make a copy. Rather, x will become an alias for the a object inside of main. On the other hand, y is passed by value, which means that it's going to be initialized by copying from the object b in main. And since it's initialization, that means that we have a call to the copy constructor. So we get copy ctor, and then the string that's saved inside of b, which is banana. Now we can enter the body of the function. And the first thing that it does is it creates another my class object as a copy of an existing one. And again, we're initializing a new object, which means that we have a call to the constructor, specifically the copy constructor. So we get copy ctor, and then we look at the string that's saved inside of x. x is an alias for the a object inside of main, so that string is apple. Now we reach the end of func, and what that does is it runs the destructors for the local objects, the local objects get destroyed in the reverse order of creation. So the last thing that was created was Z, and that's the first thing that gets destroyed. So we get detour apple. The previous thing to be created was Y, and that had the string banana, so we get detour banana. All right, now the function is complete. It returns, we continue where we left off in main. And the next, next thing that it does is it constructs a C2 the object c2 as a copy of c and again because we're initializing a new object that means we get a call to the copy constructor and the string that's saved inside of c is crazen now on the next line we actually have an assignment because the left hand side object it already exists it already has a value what we're doing is we're changing the value that that's stored inside of it okay so we get a call to the assignment operator and the old value was crazen. The new value also happens to be crazen. And so we'll write out both of those. Now we reach the end of main, which means that all of the local objects get destroyed in the reverse order in which they were created. C2 was the last one to be created, so it's the first one to be destroyed. And it has the string crazen. Okay. The next to last one to be created inside of main was C, and that also has the string crazen, so we get another detour crazen. And then the, the next to last one to be created was B, which has the string banana. And then finally, the very first object to be created was A, which had the string apple. And then we're done in the program ends.